Hi everyone! Hi! Uh, happy uh, 2018! It's our first video uh, of the uh, year. First video of the year. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I did one with Jenna this oh, morning. That's right. but yeah. cool. Officially, me and you yeah. are our first one back. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're doing a video about all about breastfeeding and uh, feeding a toddler. Uh, like usual, that's not my my forte, I'll be honest. So I'll be, uh, I guess, directing the conversation with you. I'll ask you questions. So I'll be your student today. <laughs> okay. You're gonna teach me about breastfeeding and feeding a toddler. Perfect. Okay. All right. I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> so um, just uh, just maybe to to recap a little bit, like um, this is part of the Mommy in Me program. So. Uh, we are at week 10 for them, and we're talking about this subject. Uh, for people that maybe are breastfeeding or feeling a toddler right now, or maybe you're pregnant and you want to have more information about what to expect in the future, or maybe you just want to know. So um, the first thing I want you to explain me a little bit, what people can expect, because the first, like a toddler would be two years, that's mm -hmm. kind of what we... Um, so what do you expect from the time that you actually get your new baby, a newborn, to two years? What, like, in a nutshell, I can, what do you expect? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> a very condensed lifespan in two years, and, and you definitely learn a lot about even the human being, you know, growing up. Um, the first thing I could say is probably no baby is the same. So mm -hmm. even if it's your first, your second, or third, probably none of them will be the same. Um, and whatever you see or read in books may not exactly go as planned, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world, do not panic, uh, but ask lots of questions and ask specialists in, in, in the, to be advised or to have tips on how to, to go about. But I would say, obviously the baby's gonna start as a little baby at first, they're probably gonna sleep a little bit more, they will eat very little, but at spurts of time, they have a choice of breastfeeding or formula, which we'll get into a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's the decision you can make at the time. The first four to six months, it's pretty much going to be just that, which will be actually simpler than, than what people think. However, when time is for solids, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, if, again, no baby will have the same appetite. There will be lots of growth spurts. Growth spurts mm -hmm. by that could be two or three days actually in a row. Uh, which will mean that your baby will be increasingly hungry maybe every two, three hours rather than every four, five, six hours, and that will continue to change. But the growth spurt can, change, can last about two, three days. So it could be less sleeping, a more 24-hour kind of feeding, and you're like, what's going on? Just go with it. It will calm itself down. Um, and then once you get to maybe let's say age of one to two, that, that phase will go a little bit slower, or so I felt. Um, every stage was a little bit longer after, and it was more about ensuring that there's good healthy habits to start. So toddler don't have an idea what they like and what they don't, mm -hmm. so we do. Yeah. So not to impose that onto them. So if you don't like avocado, still offer it. It's not their problem, it's, it's yours. <laughs> Uh, sweets, they don't they don't really care for sweets at that time. So to not introduce that stuff too early on as uh -huh. a treat or as a reward, yes. I find there's there's no need for that at all. Like, you know, a nice hug and a kiss, they're probably going to enjoy that reward a lot more than there would be uh, yeah. foods like that. So in a nutshell, that's probably where I can say what to expect. Because uh, like I said, again, it, it, nothing will be the exact same way that you think it will be. <laughs> But don't stress over it. Don't stress. Don't it's stress. like you need to go with the flow. I think. Go with the flow. Yeah. And every so often, maybe ask advice of either a dietitian or myself. Uh -huh. Make checking, doing your regular check-in with your um, either your family doctor or pediatrician, depending yeah. on who you, you're going to see. Those are very important to stay on track just to make sure that the growth of the baby is there. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much what they base it on is as long as the baby is on its own growth spurt, um, then nothing is to worry about. Yeah. And that's just a, a friendly mm -hmm. reminder that what we'll be saying, our general guideline, mm -hmm. um, we need to really go case by case to, to see what maybe your baby exactly need at this moment, but we'll kind of go just a general guideline mm -hmm. about what to expect. So um, I would like to, to, like, we'll start with breastfeeding. So why breastfeeding is so important 
And how, because there's a lot of people that it's either that they can't breastfeed or maybe their lifestyle doesn't allow it or maybe their body just doesn't uh, want it. So why, why it's important to breastfeed? And if you don't, well, what can you do to still make sure that, you know, that you're doing it right? Because mm -hmm. there's a right way of... Of course. Uh -huh. um, either reading lots about it, getting information from the um, lactation... Um, Oof. <laughs> no, no. It's gonna come back to me. Um, anyway, uh, I find that with breastfeeding, or in my personal experience too, uh, breastfeeding is easy-ish, but it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is too. It is, it is work because when you breastfeed, you will be there for maybe three minutes, forty-five minutes, sitting down, probably very multiple times a day. Yeah. So my baby breastfed every forty-five minutes the first. <laughs> two days at the hospital. So that's all I felt like doing was pretty much in between. like, okay, I have enough time to go to the bathroom and grab my teeth and sit right back down. That's pretty much what I did. Um, but however, in terms of, let's say when you give birth initially, the breastfeeding will actually help your body go back to, uh, even to your uterus, to your stomach, to your, how much calories you burn, uh, to the hormones. It will help stabilize the hormones so that your body doesn't go, what's Crazy. going on? Crazy. Yep. Um, especially in terms of if you've had, uh, say a c-section breastfeeding is actually very recommended because okay. the natural birth is meant to get your body knowing it the, the body will figure it out okay the baby's gone whereas c-section it's kind of invasive on the body there's uh -huh. no idea then you wake up you know the next day and the baby's not there so the hormones are not quite ready okay. so some can have the baby ooze just because of that too oh. but breastfeeding can go in and actually help and calm it down or help balance it out hmm. I didn't know that. Well. Yeah, <laughs> I never <laughs> thought about that that way. So, so it does help in that sense. Uh -huh. um, in terms of, of course, to what your baby needs, breastfeeding, it knows. So the breastfeeding will adjust to the baby's growth. So mm -hmm. if your baby had a, a growth spurt, the breastfeeding will adjust to it. Mm -hmm. If you were to test breast milk within the first few weeks, uh, especially with the first day with colostrum, but also to the third month, six months, those are kind of the highlights. The protein content, the carb content, the, the fat content will change. So if you were to analyze just a little bit at that time, the very same person, the breast milk will change. A different baby, the, it will change as well. So it adapts mm -hmm. with the baby, Okay. which is very cool. Yeah. And that's something, unfortunately, that I find the formulas cannot do. Mm -hmm. which I think, in my mind, it should. Just like buying diapers, yeah. zero to three months. Yeah, zero. Yeah. Formula for zero to three and three to six. And I, I, I feel it could be even more diversified than just a one milk for everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, it also helps in terms of immune system for the baby to develop because we know baby is born with pretty much a kind of... You know, it's born with canvas. <laughs> yeah, blank <laughs> canvas pretty much. So the best thing you can do is give your own... First to start, so the baby will start off with something, a good base. It also is proven to help with ear infection okay. uh, or many other infections, a few diseases as well as diabetes, as, as um, cancer for both the mom and the baby. So breast cancer in, for the mom, that'll help to avoid that. And it will help for various cancer for the baby on its, on its way there as well as it grows. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. yeah, and what would be like, so I guess for someone that can't breastfeed, mm -hmm. so either they can't or whatever their reason is, what they should do to make sure that they have like the most of it? Maybe? Worst case scenario, if let's say your lifestyle really doesn't permit it, what there's still some ways you can do. Let's say physically you can still breastfeed. At least give the first few days, which they call the cholesterol. Okay, yeah. Cholesterol has a lot of benefit, a lot of... Um, uh, Again, immune system yeah. in there. It's very rich in nutrient. It's actually the color is very rich and very creamy. So it's at least a lot more than nothing at all. Mm -hmm. What you some people will do too is it's possible to say just breastfeed in the evening, mm -hmm. and okay, you, yeah, you, you you can kind of go halfway. So maybe you breastfeed before bedtime. The rest of the time is is substituted with a formula. So it's still a way to kind of give something. Mm -hmm. If not, then there's some great formulas out there that you can start right on it. And I mean, 
And like uh, about pumping and stuff like that, it could be another thing that some people There's, do. There's again like. some really great pumps out there that will help actually stimulate your your, your breast milk. Uh -huh. So if that's one concern is to maybe somebody else can feed your baby with breast milk because breast milk can actually yeah. freeze it. Yeah. So with the right system, there's actually a little Ziploc bag you can pump, uh, put the milk in a little Ziploc bag, you can freeze that and just thaw it out for the baby to, you know, and dad can offer it, grandma, yeah. whoever's going to take care of your baby. So it is doable that way or to supplement with it. Or same thing, if you think you're never going to have, you know, a minute to yourself, you can breastfeed while you do it. Say you have an event Friday night, you can actually pump some milk ahead of time. Again, put it in a Ziploc uh, bag, leave it in the fridge. If it's going to be more than two, three days, then you can freeze it. Mm -hmm. But those bags are awesome. Mm -hmm. You just you can just plug it right on the plastic bottle and up for the baby and warm it up again. So anybody can do it. Okay. And for the people that maybe have this want really want to, but they have a hard time. Like they don't have provide. They don't have enough milk. It's a struggle for them. I have a lot of clients like that. That just their lactate lactation is not like mm -hmm. as. Um, do you have any tips, trick about that, how you can improve it? Yep. The one thing for sure is I would do for the mom that would have not enough milk to produce is make sure that if they are on a meal plan, uh, that there's enough calories. Mm -hmm. Often that's the thing. We get exhausted. We're tired. Last thing we want to do is eat because we're falling asleep. So it's it's hard to eat enough, actually, yes, believe it, it or not. And it's so important. Water is tremendously important when you're breastfeeding as well. Breastfeeding is pretty much related to how hydrated you are. Mm -hmm. So stay hydrated um, and, and watch the coffee intake because ca caffeine can also go in there. But you can use pumping to also help you stimulate. So say if you're noticing your baby's feeding time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So let's say baby's feeding again at every two hours instead of every four. Then chances are either the baby's into a growth spurt or you're not producing enough milk. So what you could do is after a session of breastfeeding is you can actually pump mm -hmm. for a little while. You could do that throughout the day after the baby's gotten its milk. You, right away, you start pumping. Doing that will increase. Uh, there's only a few ways to increase the, the milk flow is to the baby's mouth, but also a, a very good pump. And that's what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. you, you do have to have a good pump to stimulate that. But it also has to be done regularly. Because it can take up to two, maybe three days for the milk supply to kind of go, oh, I do need to produce more. Because we're all born with different um, glands. Same thing with, you know, people sweat, some don't sweat a lot, some have, mem you know, memory glands, some don't have enough. Bottom line, though, we all have a capacity to adapt. Mm -hmm. But the stimulation has got to be there continuously, steadily for two, three days. And then uh, okay, okay, before yeah. really yeah. before really saying that there is a physiological problem mm -hmm. um, and I don't produce enough milk, it has to be stimulated enough before producing it. Okay. So and that's where I find people don't necessarily do enough of, or they'll pump one evening. Well, one evening is not going to make enough stimulation to have a growth spurt from that. Okay. And like, let's say someone like me, like I'm I'm five six, I'm thirty two, um, I'm about like. 145 pounds um, got my baby like how much calorie should I be eating like I, I'm not trying to lose weight I'm just trying to feed my body mm -hmm. and I have that lactation problem so how like seriously how many calories a minimum of 2,000 calories for mm -hmm. sure a day and a minimum, say, yeah. uh, that's a minimum that's being very mm -hmm. low yeah um two to 2,500 I'd say somewhere yeah. in there for yeah. sure and that's not counting if you're active on top of that yeah so, yeah, it definitely has to be a lot higher than most people yes. think. And your, I mean, food is very important, but also if you're not sure, take a multivitamin, take your omega-3, take your vitamin D, mm -hmm. because breastfeeding comes from what you eat. So yes. what you eat has got to be diversified as mm -hmm. much as you can, too, for your body, baby to have some of that, too. Mm -hmm. The baby will always have what it needs first, your secondary. Mm -hmm. However, if you're not having enough calcium, you know, your bones can take a toll too. Yeah. So there's a lot of factor involved, let alone trying to rebalance your hormones. Mm -hmm. So again, that's why the good fats come in very important yes. place, mm -hmm. uh, but also your vitamin D because the baby needs also. So you're basically what you're eating is you're still eating for two, mm -hmm. technically speaking. So it becomes very important to mm -hmm. eat enough. Enough and the good, the good quality of food, good quality. like healthy fat, healthy carbs, mm -hmm. like plenty of... Eat your fish, yeah. like yeah. your calcium, your iron, because mm -hmm. both are very important. 
So you gotta supply both yeah. of you. Because when you're eating that type of food, you need to eat a lot of it. Like eating a lot of chicken and uh, salmon and vegetables is not the same thing as you eating like pizza and cheesecake. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you need a lot, a big volume of it. And how much water? Like I would say minimum four liters for sure. Four liters, I'd say four to six. Yeah, no, that's always <laughs> it, like. But it's, it's sometimes people don't realize they think they do everything, and mm -hmm. then when you look at it, they're not eating enough. They're not drinking enough water. Mm -hmm. Like it's. Uh, need to look at that yeah and first. watch the caffeine again intake yes. because caffeine yeah, really hydrates you right so and i know it's tempting because when you're tired <laughs> and you're falling asleep and every hour of the day you need a little boost yeah. and that's fine have your coffee but make sure to have yeah. your uh, and maybe not breastfeed right away too because you, your baby could have a little bit of caffeine as well um what would be like the biggest struggle i guess when you're breastfeeding like what the challenges that some of our clients could have I would say probably the sleep. It, it it can get pretty hard. It's it's very because um, I mean your body is going through a lot of changes in so little time. But again, breastfeeding will actually help. So it's worth going through it because mm -hmm. breastfeeding gives you the hormones to, you know, uterus to go back to normal to stabilize your hormones and everything else. And mentally, it's it's very important. So if you can have a support group, talk to people. Yeah. Even though it's cold out, still go out. Even if it's to walk at the mall with the yeah. stroller, just to see people uh that's so important because you you talk to a baby all the time which is yeah. fabulous which is great <clears throat> and and you get really good quality time if if anything that's probably the the most time you'll have with your baby is the skin and on skin contact the eye to eye contact you'll get to know your baby inside and out yeah you know by just the type of smile you know exactly what they mean mm -hmm. <clears throat> by the reaction but it's also a self care through the process as well because they'll take a toll you yeah you won't be able to do the things you want to do 24 hours. Like, your baby will dictate what you're doing. Uh -huh. I remember so many times to be in a shower trying to shave my legs and could never get to the second one because <laughs> I took too long. Yeah. Maybe need to pee, mm -hmm. right? So, and I just start crawling, crying. Uh -huh. I was just bawling, and, you know, and trying to breastfeed at the same time. And all I wanted to do was shave my legs. And at yeah. the time, it felt like horrible. It was at the end of the world. And I look at it, I'm like, well, that's not mm -hmm. the end of the world. What's, what's the hairy leg? <laughs> But it's those little things that matter. So talk to someone because yeah. somebody somewhere will go through that as well. And someday you'll laugh about it. But mentally, it will be very challenging. And I was the one that I placed the remote control into the fridge. And I went to the fridge <laughs> and there goes the remote control. It was right in the fridge. Yeah. Because we have like a support group on Facebook. And I think it's nice when mom share that experience. Yes. Because I found like, yeah, you're like... Not alone, but you know what I mean? Like, it's nice to have that support from other people and feel that you're not alone living that. Like mm -hmm. you're not even, you feel alone sometimes, but. Yeah, but you're not. You're not. And, uh, and someday, yeah, you'll look at it and it'll, it'll be funny. It'll be <laughs> funny to you, I swear, I promise. Um, okay, so uh, after we could talk about breastfeeding yeah. like until like tomorrow, seriously, that could have been like a topic by itself. But we'll move to like toddlers. So they're done the breastfeeding. They're starting to have solid food. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe talk a little bit about the portion and what's the ratio or how, what you should take in consideration when you're starting to feed a toddler. You're removing the perfect milk if you have and start putting mm -hmm. the food. Um, the first thing to consider would be the baby's iron storage and the vitamin D usually because vitamin D doesn't go, that's the one thing that doesn't go through uh, a whole lot in breast, uh, breast milk because we're actually deficient, most of us in yeah. Canada anyway, so we always supply with that. Formula is a bit different because it's kind of like milk, it has the vitamin D into it, but what supplementing it is, is not a bad idea. But iron storage would be the first thing. So that's why typically they start with cereal because cereal will be enriched with iron but you can also start with meat now okay as a puree <clears throat> so red meat and stuff like that are a tremendous source portion size will vary in terms of protein it could be a tablespoon maybe two okay. at a time so that would be as small as that uh, keep in mind that six months baby and a one-year-old will be a whole lot different right it'll yeah. keep increases so but at first maybe that's what you can think of is in terms of tablespoon as long as the baby's got a tablespoon of this tablespoon of that eventually you can add the vegetable and add the that's vegetable first thing. before the fruits yeah. and again you know as a, a meal could be a tablespoon of pureed meat and it could be a broccoli <laughs> You know, and and, yeah. and continue with the formula. Mm -hmm. So formula will always kind of go in to balance everything else or breastfeeding, whichever one you're doing. 
that that'll be the the back, you know, the making sure everything's balanced. Mm -hmm. But you still want to start wakening the palate of your baby and keep in mind they don't have any favorites. They could do faces and stuff like that, but keep yeah. introducing yeah. but don't push anything. Um, and eventually you'll be able to play with shapes and forms and and you know, yes, your baby may gag on certain <laughs> things. Normal. They have to learn. Gagging is actually part of the normal reflex. Mm -hmm. They need to learn to swallow, which is normal. Uh, but anything you might offer in pieces, I would do it more in, in stick form rather than quarter size. Because quarter size is about the size of the throat of the baby. So, mm -hmm. like, for example, a pea. A pea is not going to do anything. It's fine. It's going to go right in. But, say, a, a piece of carrot diced yeah. in, a, in a circle, those are the things I would avoid just in case if... If it there's no chewing involved and it goes right down, it's probably going to block a okay. perfect little yeah. throat. So I would keep it lengthwise. If you offer grape, cut it in half and stuff like that first. Um, and then and then again, going, let's say, let's skip on to between one, year one and year two. At that point, the portions will get bigger and bigger. But by then, maybe think more of how we should eat, like in terms of breakfast, yeah. lunch, and things like that. And again, if you're still breastfeeding, you still got the formula. It's always in the background, mm -hmm. covering up, making sure everything's there. But in terms of portion, it could be a slightly smaller, so maybe, or bigger by that time. But more as a complete meal, as in your veggies, okay. your protein, like... your fat. Then you can start thinking more as of how we eat. Yeah, like that ratio that we're using, like 50, 40 to 50% carbs. Yeah. And like a... I'm assuming baby would be like really high um, carbs though. Like yeah, for, for more like, high in carbs and actually more higher in, in fat. Yeah. Because the brain development is still there. Yes. So it's a little bit different. But in turn, you, again, because the formula and the, the, the breast milk comes in either way, don't worry too much about it because it will work itself out. Because remember, the breastfeeding will actually adapt to what your baby needs yes, to. Yes, yes, yes. So food is just there to supplement. Okay. So let your body do the work for mm -hmm. you and then the mind just kind of start because again it's just good habit for your baby to know or your toddler i don't want to know what the breakfast should look like what a lunch should look like and what's a snack should look like mm -hmm. and they should have a little bit of an idea but never force the baby and they will never starve trust me no no they they try. Try. Yeah, they they know. Yeah. so in terms of yeah. that don't worry too too much but if you're not sure i'd say come come and see a dietitian me or madeleine and we can definitely help mm -hmm. uh in that sense if there's and uh, quickly, uh, how to deal with the whole fussy toddler, like how to, because, you know, you want them to eat, you, you eat whatever, a lot of good vegetables, and you don't want to uh, raise a picky eater. So what to do to make sure that they eat everything? Yes. And <laughs> well, if they are not really picky. <laughs> because you're going to have some phases that the toddlers are just picky just because they're they're realizing they have emotions yeah. and they just wanted that day to do whatever. So it's going to be a matter of tough love a little bit, mm -hmm. unless again, there's an allergy issue or there's a problem. Yeah. So let's put that aside. Let's just say a typical normal baby toddler as being fussy that day. It's going to be up to the parents to not force, but reinforce that there's no other food coming in. Cause if you start bringing out different foods every time, they're soon going to catch on that, hey, if I put a little fuss, I'm going to have something else. Something else. Yeah, that's true. So you're setting yourself up for the next years to come. <clears throat> so keep reminding yourself that, that it's worthwhile explaining to your baby why, or your toddler, and they will listen. They, 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 they look like they won't listen, but <laughs> it's good to explain to them why. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like for example, if they don't like broccoli, but you know that broccoli is very good for them. You, you can certainly try different green vegetables, um, like you know, it's Brussels sprouts to asparagus to any of those uh, and, and see if there is a favorite. But for the most part, again, if you say you offer something for lunch, they don't want it. Then you keep either, you know, with the breastfeeding, but later on for supper, offer the same thing mm -hmm. until eventually like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to have to have it. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, because they will have their favorite. But at the end of the day, it's like us. We don't yeah. eat our yeah. favorites all the time. I, sometimes I don't feel like eating whatever, but I eat it because it's healthy. Yeah. It's kind of the same perspective. So you're the teacher in that case. Yes. So stick to your guns as much as you can because you don't want to cook two, three meals. No. You don't want to, you know. And for the most part, it will resolve itself. with. You, you, it could be a week or two of hell. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Or everything new you want to introduce. But stick to your guns. And, and after that, if they still have a good 
intake, but there's just one item they don't seem to like. Don't enforce it too, too much, but keep offering it and mm -hmm. show you know, you, that you are eating yeah, it yourself. So if, if you don't like avocado, well, say, mm, mm. this is so good. <laughs> like, you know, at, it's, yeah. you know, if they see you doing it and liking it, they will most likely, because they love to do the same thing you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Okay. Um, any quick tips on how to make the meal prep easier for your toddler? Once you get to that stage, I would say just do the same thing you would do yourself for your family. Just make sure to omit like the salt, the spices and stuff that are very strong for the, for, for the toddlers. But do make sure that they have good fatty sources. So for instance, like the Greek yogurt, no fat may not be necessarily a good choice for them. I would go for the whole milk, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in terms of that. But yeah, definitely make it easier on yourself. Do the same thing for everybody else. If everybody's having fish, then baby's having fish. Just maybe minus the sauce or the salt or whatever else you would put on there because mm -hmm. there's something that's a little bit sensitive that way. But in terms of that, be as simple as possible and go with the flow so that the baby will get as much variety as possible. Because again, their palate is like a canvas too. Yeah. So you're, the more stuff you give them, different kinds of, of, of flavors and textures, they will eventually keep that on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you got a, a lot of information from it. I actually, I did. <laughs> So, so yeah, so feel free to comment with all um, any yes, question that you sure. may have and we'll be more than happy to answer. So have a good day and see Bye. you next week. Bye-bye.